White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon and Chief of Staff Ryan Priebus made a joint appearance today at CPAC. The two used the moment to rebut the claims that they hate each other, and they also pledged that President Trump won't back off any of his agenda. Here's part of what they said. We share an office suite together. Uh, we're basically together from 6.30 in the morning until about 11 o'clock at night. I have a little thing called the war room. He has a fireplace with <laughs> you know, nice sofas. We're a coalition. You know, a lot of people think, you know, have strong beliefs about different things, but we understand that you can come together to win. We understood that from August 15th, and, and we never had a doubt, and Donald Trump never had a doubt that he was going to win. I think if you look at, you know, the opposition party and how they portrayed the campaign, how they portrayed the transition, and now they're, they're portraying the administration, it's always wrong. He's going to continue to press his agenda. And as economic conditions get better, as more jobs get better, they're going to continue to fight. If you think they're going to give you your country back without a fight, you are sadly mistaken. Every day, every day it is going to be a fight. And that is what I'm proudest of about Donald Trump. It, all the opportunities he had to waver off this. All the people have come to him and said, oh, you've got to moderate. Every day in the Oval Office, he tells Reince and I, I committed this to the American people. I promised this when I ran, and I'm going to deliver on this. So what is the real message here? We're joined now by author and Fox News contributor Charles Kreidhammer. Charles, thanks a lot for coming on. My pleasure. So the first point that they both made was we like each other. Is it true? Does it matter if it's true? And why are they telling us this? Well, I think they're trying to bat down these stories in the press, in the opposition, the mainstream media, uh, that there's this terrible conflict going on all the time. So I, fe I think they felt that was the first order of business. I think it's somewhat trivial because it was a very substantive exchange. And from Bannon, whom we have not heard from since the swearing in, yes. it was extremely revealing. This is the brains of the operation. This is the guy who thinks strategically in large categories. And he laid them out. I thought that was the most interesting part. And unfortunately, it got the least amount of coverage. Of course. So what were they? I mean, you said he described basically their aims thematically. What oh, are yeah, they? I mean, he got a representation of Trumpism that you could never get out of ranks or out of Trump. And he basically said there are three uh, sort of overarching ideas. One is the international arena. We're going to break that down. We're essentially, and you got this in the inaugural address, the world and our allies have been parasitic on us for 70 years with alliances and trade, multilateral trade. We're done with that. America first. That's number one. The second is what he calls economic nationalism, meaning trade and immigration. We're looking after America first again in terms of economy. And the third is the destruction of the administrative state. Now, on the third one, I think you can get a, na a consensus among all conservatives, and we're all rooting that on. And I think the first salvo in that war happened yesterday when Trump, the Trump administration reversed the bathroom a bill that had been issued by the Obama administration, which whatever your ideas, feelings about transgender sexuality, it is not the province of the federal government. It's nothing to do with the overblown Leviathan state. And it's a way of saying we're going to smash all this and we're going to eliminate this sort of excess. On that, that's Reaganism. That's hardcore Reaganism, the regulatory rollback. On the other two, this is going against the tradition of the last yes. 30 years, and he will run into trouble, especially on the second, having to do with trade in Congress. So this was rolled out at CPAC. This was the centerpiece of today's conference, and it's traditionally a place where conservative grassroots kind of define what it is to be conservative. This looks like the new conservatism, or a version of it. Is it the largest, do you think, constituency within the conservative tent? I think it's a good indicator. It's the strong poll of conservative thinking. In the same way that they take a poll of their presidential preferences, it's not terribly accurate. Trump came third last time. But it is, I think it's a good reflection of where conservatives are. And I think it's simply the enthusiasm with which all of this was received, as well as the other people of the high command of the Trump administration, tells you that there's nothing like winning. And they, having won, having seized uh, all the engines of power in Washington as a result of the Trump candidacy, they're going to go with it. I didn't see any dissent. The dissent will come 
from Congress down the road when, for example, they have to deal with uh, tariffs and trade and that kind of thing. But from the grassroots, people who are sort of expressing their ideology and their conservatism, they're very willing to allow the winner, uh, the one who's titular head of the party and the country and the free world to define conservatism the same way it happened with Reagan. Reagan came into a mildly center-right party and he changed it. Yeah. It became Reaganite. Forever. And now this is, Bannon is thinking through how to make a new ideology and to express, he expressed it rather well. Interesting. Charles Kramer, thank you very much for that. My pleasure.